So you're watching Peacemaker and you want more information about his father, the White Dragon. Well, I have the answers. Mostly. The White Dragon is a difficult character to follow throughout the history of DC Comics as there are two different people who use the names simultaneously, but neither has an affiliation with the other, and sometimes it's hard to determine where one ends and the other begins. However, I will do my best to explain the origins and history of the White Dragon from James Gunn's Peacemaker. Just as a warning, this character is despicable, and this video will contain Nazi and Ku Klux Klan references and imagery. If you're not okay with seeing and hearing about these topics, this video may not be for you. And just as a side note, before we begin, Augie Smith, which is the name of the character in the show, is not the name of any white dragon within the comics. Oh, and he's not Peacemaker's father in the comics either. So with that being said, let's get into it. William Heller was born into a very well-off and competitive family. As a young man, he became friends with Floyd Lawton, also known as Deadshot, a well-known villain in the DC Universe. One day, he and his family were on a drive when they took a wrong turn and ended up in the middle of a race riot. Their car was turned over and his family was killed, leaving William as the only survivor. Following this, his grandfather, James Heller, became his guardian. While his parents were always conservative, his grandfather was an outright Nazi sympathizer who was suspected of aiding the Germans during World War II, but was never found guilty of any charges. Eventually, his grandfather passed and left his substantial fortune to William. William Heller continued to harbor the hate that he was taught by his family and grew to become a prominent right-wing businessman who was covertly and even openly in some cases funding many white survivorless, neo-Nazi, and Ku Klux Klan groups and even founded his own called the Aryan Empire. He became a target of Argus when he began gallivanting as William Hell, a play on William Tell, a 20th century folk hero. Heller became a vigilante with a penchant for busting crime, but only when minorities were involved. He meant to use this alternate persona to further his racist agenda, and the Suicide Squad was brought in to take him down. However, they couldn't simply kill him, as that would only make him a martyr for his terrible cause, so the team was tasked with discrediting his work. Their plan was to expose him in Marquis Park, where he would be leading a demonstration where counter-protesters would be present. Wipeout and Captain Boomerang were sent to Central City to stage a crime where Boomerang was of course spared by William Hell and told to visit the Aryan Empire or be sent to jail alongside Wipeout, who was apprehended by Hell and handed over to the police, who were actually his fellow Suicide Squad members in disguise. At the Aryan Empire meeting, Deadshot posed as the vigilante William Hell and disavowed William Heller's hate speech. Furious at this turn of events, Heller changed into his William Hell outfit and confronted the imposter. Nobody knowing who the real William Hell was, Captain Boomerang offered a competition in marksmanship to determine the real crime fighter, which of course he knew Heller had no shot of winning. As in the Legends of William Tell, the contest was to shoot an apple off of Boomerang's head, and of course, Deadshot hit it dead center, while Heller missed due to a convoluted plan by the Suicide Squad to stop time, deflect Heller's crossbow bolt, and then restart time. After Heller missed, Deadshot unmasked Hell and claimed that Heller had taken the William Hell identity to twist the vigilante's actions to further his own racist ends. This deception was successful as the crowd began cheering for William Hell, when suddenly Deadshot disguised as William Hell was apparently shot by one of Heller's Aryan brothers who escaped, and then Heller was apprehended. However, it turns out that Deadshot, disguised as William Hell, was not actually shot. It was a squib to fake William Hell's death and end this saga once and for all. Some years later, a new vigilante popped up in Chicago and assisted Hawkman and Hawkwoman with the capture of a fleeing criminal group, but had to be stopped by Hawkman when he attempted to execute them. After the scuffle, news reporters flocked to the scene to interview this new superhero, asking all about his origins and powers. 
He told them that he was the White Dragon, a true-born American who had sprung from European stock and his goal was to be a champion of ethno-European values. The White Dragon turned out to have a similar MO to William Hell. He targeted minorities, but this time wouldn't go out of his way to spare them to be arrested. This time, he would maim his victims, showing no mercy, but didn't stoop to killing just yet, as he still wanted to be seen as a hero. Hawkwoman assumed his goal was to start a race war, his defense to the claims of being a racist was that the prison system was filled with minorities. So why was it surprising that the majority of his callers were also minorities? But he was terrible at being a vigilante. The district attorney hadn't been able to take a single case to trial because he frequently burned up any evidence in his racist rampages. Eventually, Hawkwoman tracked him down and took a picture of his face. Enraged by this, he revealed his power doesn't come from his suit, and he attacked her. But Hawkman swooped in, knocked the white dragon out, and flew away with him. After taking the evidence back to the police, they were able to determine that the white dragon was Daniel William Buchanan, former KKK Grand Dragon. He was exposed to a metahuman bomb, which granted him powers which he trained to use for years, before hiring the Metatech Corporation, who created his armor, and the plan to use the White Dragon to cause a race war. After having his identity exposed to the world, he claimed to have left the Ku Klux Klan and the American Nazi Party for them being outdated. He used his silver tongue to sway the narrative and blame Hawkwoman for persecuting someone with different ideas than her, and accused her of attacking his freedom of speech. Despite this working in his favor, Buchanan was mad with power, and searched the city for Hawkwoman and Hawkman to end them for good but was eventually defeated and sent to Belle Reve. But eventually he escaped during the events of Underworld Unleashed. Sometime after this, Hawkman went on a violent rampage, killing criminals indiscriminately, and one of those whom he attacked was Daniel Duchanan, the White Dragon. And here's where things get a bit convoluted because we don't really know if he was killed or not. Years after this, William Heller, or at least we assume it was Heller, we'll get to that in a bit, reappeared as a member of the Fourth Reich, a group of, you guessed it, Nazis whose plan it was to eliminate the descendants of the original Justice Society of America members who represented American patriotism. Hawkman tracked Heller to Commander Steele's family reunion, where the Fourth Reich wreaked havoc, killing everyone in sight, including the women and children, in the most brutal ways imaginable. While Hawkman had been tracking the White Dragon specifically and arrived to battle the Fourth Reich, he was defeated by Captain Nazi and the despicable group escaped, having accomplished their goal, or so they thought. A member of the family was rescued by Hawkman and taken to the JSA headquarters for treatment, where Sandman informed the team that the Fourth Reich had already taken out the families of General Glory, Jack Burton, the former Minuteman, as well as Mr. America. The team deduced that the group would target the original Liberty Bell and Stripe C next, and set out to prevent these attacks. While Captain Nazi went to Philadelphia to target Liberty Bell, the White Dragon flew to Blue Valley on his literal White Dragon alongside Baroness Blitzkrieg to eliminate Stripesy. However, he was taken down by Starman and Power Girl while the other members were simultaneously apprehended in Philadelphia. Where this dragon came from, we, we just have no clue. There's no story where he tames a white dragon or is given a white dragon, he just randomly shows up riding it. Of course, Heller was sent to Belle Reve and Amanda Waller, where he was recruited by her for the Suicide Squad. And just being a scumbag, racist piece of crap, you can imagine he wasn't too happy to be working for a black woman. To that end, he attempted to murder her on at least one occasion. However, she booby-trapped his armor to shock him whenever she pleased. And fun fact, he is put up against Blackguard in prison to test his skills, and both Blackguard and the White Dragon appear in the DC Extended Universe thanks to James Gunn, but have likely never met each other. 
Amanda Waller praised the White Dragon's hand-to-hand -hand skill, but wanted some modifications done to his suit, so she sent it off to Cliff Carmichael for upgrades. However, his suit was secretly given a link to General Wade Eiling, who offered an alliance with the White Dragon. The new Suicide Squad team's mission was to infiltrate an island where a company was developing a bioweapon, which was a virus that was untraceable and was 100% lethal after six hours, and it was called Scarlet Tears. The team was tasked with destroying the facility and killing everyone associated with the company. Eiling planned to sell out the team and go free and take the profits of Scarlet Tears for himself and attempted to negotiate a deal with the company they were sent to destroy, but was initially unsuccessful. Upon arrival, White Dragon flew in alongside Marauder and destroyed the anti-air missiles fired at the team and then fought the ground troops deployed against them. Seeing the overwhelming power of the Suicide Squad, the company eventually caved to Eiling's terms. The Suicide Squad then attempted to fake their deaths to get the jump on Eiling and White Dragon, but Heller's suit was able to detect their heartbeats. He was then attacked by Twister, who showed him visions of hell and tried to convince him that that was where he was headed for his crimes. However, Twister became distracted and White Dragon broke free from her influence, claimed to be a Knight of God, and then burned her alive. After killing Twister, White Dragon was attacked by Plastique, who broke open his face mask and apparently killed him then and there. The events of this arc were published between 2007 and 2008 and line up perfectly with Heller being apprehended by the Justice Society of America during the previous run we just spoke about. However, his armor is completely different here. And keep in mind that Heller, prior to this JSA run, never assumed the mantle of the White Dragon and never wore the White Dragon armor. Additionally, there is never any mention of his dragon prior to the events of the JSA run and after the events of the JSA run. You would think that if he had like a super powerful dragon that he would want that dragon to be, you know, with him when he went on Suicide Squad missions, but it's never even mentioned. While Heller was apparently killed in action during the Suicide Squad run, in 2010, White Dragon reappeared along with Baroness Blitzkrieg and Captain Nazi as members of the Fourth Reich, with new members Hunter, Shadow of War, Green Ghoul, Count Berlin, Dr. Demon, Baron Gestapo, Captain Murder, and Captain Swastika. I know, all very original names. The White Dragon had a new suit, and a new dragon. Who the hell this is, I'm not quite sure. It could be Ducanon. It could be that Heller wasn't ever killed. But the ambiguity of where Heller got his armor and the name White Dragon and where he could have gotten two different dragons is unknown, as the first dragon and this one are completely different. Keep in mind that Ducanon was also seemingly killed in the 2002 run of Hawkman, five years before White Dragon's reemergence, and not even Ducanon's original suit matches the White Dragon that shows up during the Justice Society of America run. Anyway, the group had planted an imposter and explosives within the JSA headquarters which killed Alan Scott, the JSA's Green Lantern. The rest of the team immediately went into action as the new Reich arrived on their doorstep. White Dragon came face to face with Lightning, who was able to put him and his dragon down. The rest of the fourth Reich was defeated by the JSA, except for Shadow of War, who revealed the Darkness Engine, which sapped the JSA of their powers, and they were forced to surrender. Over the next 20 years, the Fourth Reich was able to utilize the Darkness Engine to kill Hal Jordan, drown Aquaman, and take over the world, leading to a small group of now powerless heroes rising up against them. These heroes included Superman and Batman, who worked from the shadows. Eventually, Mr. Terrific was able to send a message to the past, and the JSA prevented the Fourth Reich's attack before it even began. So that is the confusing 
and convoluted history of the White Dragon. I read all of his appearances and surrounding comics, but could not make sense of his dragon, or how he seemingly died but was also alive, and how there were two white dragons who were both racists, who both tried to start race wars but had nothing to do with each other at all, and how there were four or five different outfits that didn't make sense within the continuity. It just, it's so confusing and, and convoluted like I said. If there is some explanation in a guidebook or maybe an interview or some other comic that I may have missed that you know about, please let me know down in the comments because it's kind of driving me crazy. But anyway, that's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you think of the White Dragon and Peacemaker so far and where you think his story may be heading. Thanks again for watching everybody and remember the motto, it's beating up Nazis over everything and I'll see you guys next time.